following program on Ada Verna 24 is classified for general audience. It is intended for all ages. It contains little or no violence, no strong language, and little or no sexual dialogue or situations. We would like to remind our viewers that the views expressed in this program by our participating guests are solely viewpoints of them who take part and does not reflect the views and beliefs of the Verena Media Network. A very good evening and you're joining with us on another episode on Gen XYZ and as you all know this is a platform where we talk about contemporary topics or issues based on the youth. Now today on the program uh, we are going to talk about this topic which some might say that it's a threat, some might say that it's an amazing intervention and uh, some people might not even know that this is causing a problem or the advantages that it holds. Now this is about the advancements of AI. Now when considering AI, now AI is uh, refers to a computational you know tools that are able to somewhat replace, not replace per se, but substitute certain human intelligence in performing certain tasks. Now this has been, you know, developing at a breakneck speed and people have been adapting to it. So now on this program we are going to talk about the effects it has on human lives and especially in the youth and the advantages and the disadvantages also it poses. Now to talk about this topic we have uh, three most important guests and uh, that is Mr. Ran Sid Fernando, who is the past president of BSC, BCS and the managing director of uh, Forspend. And also we have uh, K.V. Kuganadan, who is the chief information officer for Jana Shakti Group. And uh, we also have Shanaka Rajapaksha, who will be joining us soon, that he'll be a little bit late, I guess. Um, so until he comes, I would like to continue this discussion with the both of y'all now. Okay. Both of y'all are in the front lines of these AI and the technological advances, considering the businesses that you do and the researchers that y'all do. And uh, so now to start off with this topic, I want to know why don't you tell our audience about how dominant is AI right now in the current context? How, where does it stand? Right. So, uh, so basically if you take AI, it falls into two categories. You have a thing called general AI and you have a thing called narrow AI. So general AI is like human intelligence, that is like how a person will look, do things, emotions and stuff like that. Narrow AI is specific areas like self-driving cars, like say maybe chat GPT which is there. So a lot of stuff or specifically to look at quality and then figure out, figure something out or figure out fraud. So in the narrow AI field there's a lot of advancements. While general AI, still I think there is a long way to go. Okay. Yeah. What do you think? I think what Rancid told is I 100% agree. Um, if you think about on the practical approach, on we talk about this jargon word of uh, AI, artificial intelligence, machine learning. You know, each research uh, they put their own flavor to ensure that his research on top of each, uh, once they do put it in the paper, research paper. So from the academic and non-academic point of view, so this kind of artificial intelligence is placing a, a major role in our life with knowing or without knowing us. That is how this is uh, playing around us. Sometimes you will think like, uh, you wanted to do something, you are doing some research, in the, the Google or anything, after some times you see a lot of related topics are pumped in your social media things. So that is how that it has interconnected with within the social media also is pushing the data that you wanted uh, from the research. Uh, what is happening in the Google research. Yeah, that is completely true. I don't see anything that we use currently is not affiliated with some sort of AI, like even the smartphones that we use or the search engines that we use, it's affiliated with some sort of AI technology. But now what I really want to know is if you take a time a decade ago, where were we and where are we now? 
and again how strong is AI and um, how often do we start using this AI technology? So for example if you take a decade ago also as Kugan said would have been an AI user because if you take Google search engine it uses AI to tell you which links to show because nobody really puts those links out. It's AI engine that searches those links. Uh, again like 10 years ago if you take things like movie recommendations or book recommendations from Amazon that uh, that used a lot of AI to give it give those to you all right while now those have developed a lot but if you take 10 years ago and now there are certain things that are like changing very very fast for example self-generating art like Dale E right? so where you can now get get like you can give a prompt and get somebody to draw something and that happens automatically. So I think in the last 10 years, there has been a major shift, like there's a lot of AI has been used. Ruben, what do you I, think? I yeah? think what uh, uh, I acknowledge with what uh, on the 10 years back, what happened is over the period of time, there's a digital maturity, okay? And there's a digital maturity in the all the industry where we are uh, each one of us are associated these days. Okay, for example, if you take your industry, um, uh, the, where the media is playing currently, that has done a major, uh, like if you take in 10 years back, your crewman has to go there and do the fl uh, move filming and everything. With uh, technologies where it is matured, there people can use their smartphone and they can capture it and they can post it. So that is how the, the digital maturity and the technology maturity has grown up. With this evolvement of the, the technology maturity, there's a learning has happened over the last 10 years time. So from 10 years back, yes, we have used AI in a, in a different scale, but it is now, it has evolved in a different landscape. So with that concept, I, I, I will say yes. Uh, about 10 years back, if you search Google and certain things, you will see one or two lines. Now, if you search Google, there are question and answers also. What do you think about this? Which, which country? What is the square feet? Everything is very much uh, AI driven one. So that it has uh, harvested the data from the different, different website, different, different portal, and it is giving the ultimate result what you wanted. And with the uh, convenience way, because on the, on, the, on the AI also should give, at the end, a convenience factor to the normal public to understand. Because uh, sometimes we'll say, we sometimes we use different, different technology jargon words. But what happened is, what this AI made a, a revolutionary thing, the jargon words become very, where the non-IT people also can't uh, know. That's right. Nowadays, like if you wanted to know about certain medical things, what you do is now first, Google. before you go to doctor, yeah. <laughs> you yourself Google do it research. and research about it, okay. yes. So what happened is, it go and search about particular illness or what I'm going through in my life and it pops up. So it is there's a the intelligent engine is working at the back end. It's telling what you wanted to and it's give you the guidance also. What to be done, what not to be done. The choice is us ultimately. Okay. Now since the, yes. yes. And also like if you look at like ten years ago and today uh, I think one major thing you see in terms of AI usage is if you take a smartphone, now you have at least two to three cameras and it takes images from each of these cameras and automatically corrects it and give it. So each time you click on a photograph, you are using AI. So the usage of AI is now like everywhere. Yeah, that's yeah, right. Even now, in simple things. As you have mentioned, the, adapt, uh, the development of AI has like, you know, increased within the past decade. How can you describe the adaptation into AI? Because now a decade ago, people were not exposed to this much of technology. But right now, when you consider the young people, 
they're born with technology in front of them we'll say it's smartphones or TVs or you know parents just give them a smartphone just to you know probably keep them quiet for some time and even uh, Mr. Rancid, you also mentioned before the program, I think, those days when we considered in classrooms, teachers always encourage us to use ink pens. But right now, saying that, you know, when we're using ballpoint pens, you know, our handwriting is not going to be okay. But then, what are we doing now? We are using even electric pens now, right? Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So, like that, how can you describe the adaptation into technology then and now in human minds? So, for example, like now three months ago, this chat GPT came, came into being and that's like revolutionary because it's sort of how you can just give a prompt and it gives you answers, right? So, as, as in any technology, the adaptation will also happen, happen with time. For example, and you can have different levels. For example, let's say you now when, when a car is invented, uh, there will be some people who will be chauffeur driven, there will be some people who will be driving a car, some people will be repairing a car and then there will be some people who really make the car and invent per parts of it. So if you take AI also what I feel is it's something similar. So when you have AI you have different levels. So you get certain people who will be making the AI part of it, the algorithms, the thinking, the advancements while there will be also users again at different levels. It can be like a complete end user like you and I who will probably take a photograph or use chat GPT. There may be another level where like they'll have companies and they'll offer products using AI. So there will be different levels of adaptation and that adaptation I feel that it will be much faster than any other technology that has been that has come out so far. For example, if you go from uh, sailing boats to motorized boats it, or if you take from steam engines to diesel engines, there is a certain amount of time for adaptation. But this adaptation of AI, I think, is it's accelerating and going to be very fast. So the younger generation will all be using AI tools at different levels. Yeah. I, I think what I uh, would like to add on that. Uh, the young generations have a lot of choices. That's right. Okay. Not like in, in our days, over 10 years back, 15 years back. Now choice is unlimited. But within the choice, to choose the right things is a key factor. And that is a success for them also. For example, now in the month of April, there will be a lot of holidays. All the young people who wanted to see is, would like to go for a holiday package. So if you go and search, there will be a lot of holiday packages there. And what kind of uh, holiday and hospitality management is attractive for them. Sometimes some people, they like to go for uh, uh, beach oriented, inland oriented, the choice is there. And based on their budget, how is a planning. So this planning is already done now using intelligence. It's all the data I have gathered from the last 20 years and the behavior pattern all gathered. And the reviews has been compiled very nicely. For example, I went to the one of the beach, uh, Kirikatiya beach, I'm sure, uh, uh, fantastic beach down south in Matara. I went on 31st of night, December. The first time I have ever been to that beach, fantastic surfing, but how many of Sri Lankans knows about these beaches? Question mark. But on that day, full of foreigners. What they are doing is before they arrive, they have done a research and they found from the reviews, this is a fantastic beach. The choice is made. So this is the, how the artificial intelligence is working indirectly to them, to giving the guidance. This is the best choice and best fit for your budget. So what I do is next time I go and see, okay, I have this much of budget, the new taxation and everything, okay, this is going to be my tax and this is the best budget. I have three days. I just see the ideal uh, weather condition during the time with the past experience if I'm going to book during my New Year holiday. Okay, last five years, there's no rainy day, weather is fantastic so that I can enjoy my holiday very well because every investment there is a return so we always say roi so that choice is made using this artificial intelligence engine which is gathered over the 10 years of time 
it pushes data. In the past, the weather was like this, expected to be like this. So there's a choice. For example, same thing you can do in terms of shopping also. Okay, there are shopping things, Amazon is there, um, Uber if you want to do like, it's like today, I feel hungry, I want to go for a Sri Lanka, no, Italy. Okay, which is ideally, choice. Again, then you go to the reviews, which uh, mall or which uh, restaurant I should go it. So it's, so, uh, but we won't think like this is made of the artificial intelligence, but the engine is built, the each, the consumer market oriented people, they have built this engine so that it gives the ultimate benefit to the end users as runs it indicated. So this is how the each industry they are using the artificial intelligence to the utmost top to give the consumer benefit and usage and so that it become a kind of a daily lifestyle so they can use it. So that is how it makes life so easy these days. So slight downside to that as from, from Fugat's example is like so if you like the Virakatiya beach you end up getting more content about the Virakatiya beach right? Sorry Kirikatiya. Sorry Kirikatiya beach. That's right. right? So what happens is like depending on what your likes and dislikes you end up getting stuff you like to see mm, right? That's right. So downside of this is let's say you now you don't like a particular political party the content you are going to fed in is say once that content that you which you don't like that political party you now if you take the Ukraine Russia war if you like the Ukrainians attacking the Russians more the amount of videos you get at some time is Ukraine attacking Russia and in if you if you like to watch Russians attacking the Ukrainians more you will end up seeing more videos of so what happens it has a specialization but that could have slight negative effects as well because you get your views get polarized. Now if you take the morning papers that is editorial decide what comes. I mean there are, like, I mean, there are typically are expected to have balanced views in a, in a newspaper you will have like you will have different articles but you can't filter with them AI, out. Absolutely. It yeah. automatically gives you what you like to see. Exactly. Right. Sometimes we feel whether Google is reading our minds. <laughs> so that's a bit of a negative thing. So for example, if it's a kid, like if a parents give everything he likes, they get a bit spoiled. So AI is spoiling exactly. all of us. So that's, that's something. That's exactly which I want to talk about in the next segment also now, because in the first 15 minutes of our program, we are talking about the benefits of what AI has been doing and how advantages it has been on human lives and how convenient it has made our lives in and um, also I want to touch upon how AI has influenced businesses and how business use AI technology in order to run their day-to-day -day transactions. So, but uh, before that, let's go into a short commercial break. You're watching Gen XYZ and we will be back soon. Welcome back to Gen XYZ and we were talking about the topic of uh, artificial intelligence and we were in discussion with uh, Rancid Fernando who is the past president of BCS and managing director of Forest Spain and also KV Guganathan who is the chief information officer for Jana Shakti group and we have uh, Shanaka Rajapaksha he is not a new face on the show he has been on Gen XYZ prior as well Shanaka you were not there for the uh, first segment but nice to have you on the second segment as well he is the chairman of the national ICT awards in 2019 and 2021 Thank just you, to uh, Brief you, Shanaka, like in the first segment, we were just talking about uh, the advancement of artificial intelligence and how advantages it has been throughout in human lives and how humans have been adapting to this technology. And uh, yeah, so basically that. Now, coming into detail, I think uh, Mr. Rancita also mentioned about Chaji uh, PT, also about the new application which has been introduced. Uh, I want to know more about the dark side of it. Now, most of the people will not know that, okay, some might think that this is an amazing uh, intervention and it's a new introduction, but some might think that this is a threat. 
so i need y'all to explain to me now as businessmen as y'all being the forefront of this technology also uh, what do you think about that do you yeah. see it as a threat uh, or if you go back to 1950s uh, shenali dr makati he is like the founder of uh, ai so he was actually he co- came up this ai concept uh, you know the whole thing because he wants to basically simulate the human aspect like the human brain uh, to uh, ai so how the, how from 1950 to today 30 years gone i mean uh, so it has evolved to a great extent but as you said there are i mean disadvantage i don't like to call it a dark dark side because i firmly believe that uh, ai is a cutting edge and you know we need more and more ai absorbed to all this business domain day to day work day to day environment if you take the agriculture sector you need ai i mean that has become uh, i mean in sri lankan context we like to talk about sri lankan context because we we are a agri based country and i think uh, we had to absorb like we are facing a huge threat in the paddy paddy industry nowadays you can call it yellow or something i mean so that's a huge threat but if you have used this ai technologies those things would have been predicted long time ago so uh, 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 talking about the bad side is like uh, certain professionals might face certain difficulties in the years to come that's the only thing i see but uh, these two gentlemen will have we can add more uh, yeah that's the, yeah, that's discussion. exactly which yeah. i want to talk about now when considering the labor market as well i think mr ranjit also you mentioned that there are applications where uh, you can generate art also from it so what's going to happen to these artists what's going to happen to the technicians or the electrical engineers or what so if you have an artificial intelligence telling you what to do so now people has have a fear that you know they might lose their jobs so what are your thoughts on that so as with any technology there will be certain jobs that are lost and certain jobs that are created right for example when the motor cars came on the roads first people with horse carriages i'm sure said all their jobs will be lost which is true right but uh, but now we like it's much more comfortable to ride a car and go in it so when technology advances there will be certain i mean it's a fact that we have to accept right so i think for the younger generation the future will have a lot of jobs where you have to either use your hands and do or use your brain some of the supervisory jobs may be lost now when you again say artists losing their jobs say years back if you go to a like a movie theater they draw that picture that is there in front of the theater some guy paints it like if a new movie comes they paint some sort of picture of james bond holding a gun then came digital art where you can do the thing in the computer and then get a print out of it and now it's like you can give a prompt to ai and it draws something for you so there will be certain things but then again for human creativity i feel there'll always be a future for human creativity if you can be creative creative people will have more opportunities and one more thing is shenali like as to this is two gentlemen my friends they indicated one more aspect is going to be on the human capital management okay um if you take some of the major factories in europe and in in asian countries this uh, certain repetitive jobs have been computerized what do you mean computerized means using the the machine learning things or using the artificial intelligence a certain repetitive jobs you don't need a human person to be take a decision because this is already with a pattern what happened in the past it can be automated with with the with the robots etc same thing can happen i take a one good example is uh, i'm sure the youth we came through the the lego the lego uh, the factory is fully computerized a to z even to the the manufacturing to dispatch the the final box entire thing is fully automated so if you take in uh, 80s they have the workforce of say 80000 now it has been 
reduced to say at least by uh, 40 percent or 60 percent. But this impact have two fold. One is there is the, the bottom line, uh, the profit level of the company has increased because of there is no human capital. So they can diversify that, uh, that profit to other avenues to create jobs. Okay, so that is how certain companies what they are using is. As Ranseth indicated, they can create a avenues looking for new investment, new opportunities, what is out there and moving these very skilled operations people towards that. So that is happening now. So you can't say, no, this is going to, uh, the, there's no need to be have the fear. But there are a lot of plenty of opportunities are there with the globalization, etc., where we never explored in our day-to-day -day life. So let's look for that new opportunities. For example, now the good thing is we are, the whole world is moving towards a sustainable and a green energy. So that is going to be future. So there are opportunities where we can do a lot of research, where we can use a sustainable energy, a green energy, and how we can come out with this uh, uncertainty natural events. So these are opportunities we can explore. So yes, there's a minus point. Yes, there's a workforce reduction, but these skilled people, they have always opportunities. Okay. So all the, all the young people, what I always advise is, please empower yourself with two things always. Professionally have passionate for yourself and with the educations, you upskill your educational skills. When you have these two, you can live anywhere else. You don't need to worry about this AI or anything because you have two things in your things. Have passion and have a love for that where you are, what you are doing and always upgrade your skills day to day, which is in demand in two years time, three years time, five years time. So you are programming yourself what is a supply or demand is expected. You are giving your skills towards that. So that is how you have to um, manage and uh, strategize yourself towards that. That's something which I also want to ask about the intellectual and the intelligence of the young people. Now, children go to school in order to, you know, their muscle memory should be enhanced. But now, with the introduction to chat GPT, you find so many people using this to pass their exams, to do their assignments, to do their projects. So now, they have been using it for the wrong reasons. And there's a questionable uh, factor when it comes to the intelligence of the human mind, because now not just students, but so many people might be using this for this purpose. So what can you say for this usage of this application? So for example, when, um, when the internet first came, students started copying, getting links and started copying stuff, downloading stuff into Word and creating papers. So there was a lot of plagiarism. Then came software that automatically detected plagiarism where if you have copied something, it can be detected. Similarly, ChatGPT only was available from November 2022. So they are talking of just two and a half months. So, so now, right now, today, there will be people who are working there's a lot of money to be made to be able to figure out whether it's from ChatGPT or whether it's something done, done by humans. So there'll be people working on it. So those tools will come with time, right? So that like, for example, to check whether this has been done by ChatGPT, there'll be, there'll be tools. Probably you'll have to like invent a new word for it, what it means, because typically it's not copying something, it's something original. So they will come with time, but the advantage, advantage is you and I, without doing a Google search now, we'll be able to use ChatGPT to get a hell of a lot of information in a nice way where you don't have to click any links, it's summarized, given out perfectly. All right, so my question is now, will the intellectual skills of one person reduce because of the introduction to AI? 
that's my question because a lot of people have the fear of doing so when it comes to parents also they must be always complaining oh my child is always on the phone eh? they are not doing anything which is interactive or they are not even playing outside but they are involved in this so they are scared that their child might you know lose that skill within their mind can i ask you a question yeah have you used a calculator i have So yes. do you think your intelligence is affected by using this calculator? Do you think if the calculator was never invented you'll be more intelligent than now? You yeah, got to think now manually if we didn't have the calculator we have to do the calculations by ourselves. Yes. But still now the calculator automatically does the sum for us. Yes. So then there is something you can do and you can spend your brains on something else. Yeah? <laughs> so typically no, getting AI back to your specific question generally yeah. Now you are asking whether human can be replaced by this chat I mean the work yes. or the intellectual property uh, right now it's possible but as Ransit said within the time like we were when we are doing assignments there's something called um, you, there are softwares enough and more softwares to find out whether we have copied or we have done any you know uh, cut and paste basically so likewise there will be tools and you know uh, so i think that has to be there like the similarly this uh, chat gpt uh, you know that investment there will be another person who is going to invest on how to catch those guys so i think uh, anyway uh, when it comes to certain skills of a person individual uh, and this intellectual thing i don't think it can be replaced mm -hmm. so i mean uh, time uh, anyway you can do it for a short period but in the long run it will definitely get caught all right and uh, the other aspect which i want to touch on is the accuracy of this technology because now right now worldwide i see them using it for healthcare for the automobile industry and about safety concerns they're using ai so but how accurate is this because is it 100% correct is there something that we need to rely on our human minds per se as well so in terms of chat gpt i think it's too early to say because it's still february Came it doesn't have to be just chat uh, gpt but in a holistic view of ai very accurate without a doubt you're confirming it absolutely uh, i will say no to ransit mm -hmm. first because if you see a uh, one industry i will take where we all of us we here day to day on the autonomous driving yes okay if you take good example when they introduced the autonomous uh uh industry there was a couple of incidents but that there is a, ev everything there is a learning learning curve all humans please we have to understand there is a learning curve in our life it is not artificial intelligence just didn't came from wherever it is done by the human being so there may be a learning curve to become maturity that's come with the experience so we are we never thought has occurred during that autonomous uh, driving testing so they eliminate that now so always there is a error and rectifying even any industry if you take computerization we have here i am coming from last 24 years the first time you won't get it 100% right because there is always mistakes we make then there is a learning we become maturity on that then we become the perfection at the time of perfection as ansit this i agree with him yes there won't be uh, 100% yes once is stabilized you can 100% rely on technology and getting back to kugan uh, sorry for there are strong ai and weak ai so you have to be you know certain, like say you have siri or dr watson or google you know analytics or whatever in social media also now you get lot of ai component and you know when you search or do whatever it automatically prompt you to do certain things people doesn't know but without knowing in the social media ai has taken you know as a big storm now i mean in sri lanka the social media is used to politics also nowadays and people with knowing or without knowing certain ai engines are working so uh, there are as i i want to emphasize on one fact is that there are strong ai and there are weak ai so we have to be very precise when you are selecting this particular tools 
That's right. Thank you for that update on that. I want to continue this discussion as well on the accuracy of uh, artificial intelligence as well. But before that, we are going into a short commercial break. We'll be back soon. You're watching Gen XYZ. Welcome back to Gen XYZ and we've reached the last segment of our uh, episode and also we are in discussion with Shanaka, Mr. Coogan and also Ransit. Uh, now we just left off by talking about the accuracy of AI. I want to talk about now how AI has been um, effective and advantageous to the business side as well and also to the healthcare sector. Now as we were talking about the accuracy, there are certain tweaks also that AI needs to develop. But right now, worldwide, according to my research, I have found like certain countries using this technology even to do surgeries or even to detect even uh, early symptoms of cancer and whatnot. And technology is so advanced right now. But um, how accurate is this? Can we be trusting this artificial intelligence just as much as we trust uh, the human mind? So, for example, if you take medical imaging, right? So, I think IBM came up with a program called Watson that reads medical images. Now, there are certain things that be careful of. Machine learning, we learn from those images, right? So, what happens is when the cameras become more accurate, the number of pixels that get captured increases. So, sometimes if you have like a few cancer cells in older images, if you have a brand new imaging machine that has a lot more pixels, the software might detect a lot more cancer cells. Mm -hmm. So there are instances like that. So you can't, it's very, very difficult to predict the accuracy, right, on the technology. Yeah, how you adapt yeah. also. Have you adapted the technology, uh, Shadali? So, it'll be mean, careful of changes Rancid, in machines, in all of those factors. As Rancid very coming. correctly said, like the image quality is not there, the resolution is not there, then your uh, prediction is go, you know, you won't get the pr correct prediction. So, likewise, how you adapt the AI technology to different b domains is, you know, and how, how, uh, how accurate is your, how sophisticated and how uh, equipped your, this technology and the stuff is, you know, uh, very much uh, essential to get into this, uh, you know, strong AI predictions. So uh, it's it's go it's evolving. I mean, the AI is evolved over the last. I mean, uh, when we were learning IT, uh, we, they talk about uh, artificial intelligence, uh, fuzzy logic. Fuzzy logic is like uh, when you use the elevator, you press the button and you, you find the shortest possible path and you get into the uh, elevator. So. I mean, that's how we learn about AI when, I mean, 20 years ago. So, it <laughs> so, uh, so likewise, uh, technology has evolved, the predictions have been very accurate. Certain professionals, I mean, will have issues. I mean, I mean, healthcare you ask, but certain, I mean, we, you can't say 100%, but certain things can, certain, uh, certain individuals, certain professionals can be replaced by AI because if the, uh, predictions are strong. Mr. Kugan, I would like to get your idea on how AI has been used for business and how it has helped. Like, is AI necessary for an entrepreneur to start up a business per se? Uh, say, rather than on the entrepreneur to start a business, yes. Because before I move into the business why, where I am going to invest my business next time, I can get a pattern. AI means it's a pattern what it has occurred in the past. For example, you ask a good questions on the, on the health. Okay, health, if you take the symptoms, yes. Over the period of time, the symptoms was there for last 30 years. But if you take a human, there are different variety of the blood group. So each group, they have the reaction to the particular medicine. So this accuracy comes from that pattern and the data outcome. So that is fed. And this is how the AI is working. So, on the topic of, yes, I am going to start a business tomorrow. How, so they have, uh, some of them are done a kind of a, a 
started same business in the past and how they are successful not in sri lanka maybe in other countries you can they have fed most of the things now i'm sure most of the people nowadays now there are a lot of cryptocurrency is going on and there is the bloomberg where they are talking about stocks and so there are there's a prediction is there predictive analysis is there so in the business yes by seeing the pattern in the past how i am successful whether my investment is going to bring the return what i am expected how is going to be my product ultimately any product is going to be the uh, going to reach the consumers how the consumers is going to react to my product or services what i am going to offer to us so these things you can get it from the pattern behavior and from the past and how it is going to be successful yes it is going to be helpful but for that we should have a very good uh, research oriented mindset first then only i can see what it is my going to be the uh, success certain things you should have the patience you can't expect tomorrow you invest say 5 million rupees you can't expect roi within 2 years time so you have to wait for the till that business to become maturity till that product and services going reaching the customers acceptance then how you do the marketing propaganda lot of facts are there so ai will do the one aspect but other aspect also collaborate for its purpose going forward okay we are reaching the end of our segment also to end up uh, our program i want you to give a small message to the youth and the parents who are uh, watching this because most of the parents are fearful like okay technology is going to overtake uh, the entire universe i don't know this is this is uh, some imaginary thing that which has come into their mind with all the you know fictional movies that are also coming out where the robots are you know taking over the world or something but um I know that's not possible but uh, according to the conversation that we had today it might be in time to come but not recently so I want you all as businessmen also working with AI to give a small message to the youth on what they need to be aware when using AI and also to the young entrepreneurs who are there before start using uh, this AI technology uh Can I, I think uh, I have uh, I think there's a small big similarity in the presenters today because we are representing one body called British the Chartered Institute for IT Sri Lanka section BCS so we are running a competition called NBQSA National ICT Awards for the last we are celebrating 25 years this year and the winners of uh, NBQSA we are taking to the next level Asia Pacific ICT Alliance Award Last year it happened in Pakistan Islamabad we came fifth among the Asia Pacific countries among 17 countries so this AI because this first or second countries Pakistan won the overall prize uh, and second is Hong Kong right and Thailand I Thailand think. so they have used more AI component for their products so what we want to emphasize on the fact that our young generation when they are doing i mean we have brilliant set of young entrepreneurs and young scientists and you know inventors i mean we we have done actually one of our guy, one of our students only did this uh, dsn robo which who is i mean i don't want to talk about much but likewise so what the message should be all these young young people when they are doing ict products get more AI, ai component to their products and which will you know help for us to compete in the international level we are not going to st uh, stop at asia pacific level we are planning to go to uk awards also this year and not only uk uh, the what do you call the europe market also so we uh, as B bcs the chartered institute for I ict we have uh, managed to penetrate to these in the uh, local international uh, platforms and our platform is fantastic the nbqsa so i encourage all the young people to get into these platforms and you know Uh, experience this and get into the world thing where we can make dollars also which will solve our uh, current crisis also all right is uh, cooking and runs it yeah for that one thing is i acknowledge what shanaka said so for that everything is start with self the young people start so for that i always take this example the fastest animal is cheetah the tallest animal is giraffe the big animal is elephant and the most intelligent animal is chimpanzee who is the king of everybody lion 
So why? Because it's having a strong mindset. So all the youth, you should be AI for yourself. So that when your mind is so AI, you can conquer this world. So start with your mind, prepare your mind, and make use hundred percent of your own intelligence. Then you can become conquer the world, and you are going to be the winner ultimately. Thank you, Mr. Kuga. And uh, Mr. Ramseth, is there anything you want to say as well? Yeah. So I think adding to uh, what uh, Kuga and Sharnaka said. My message to young people are like learn about AI. I think you all should spend some time learning about the technology, what is available, what can be done. BCS has some good courses in terms of AI. You can also read about it on Google. There are different courses on Coursera, and learn, and that will that will help you a lot. It will give you ideas and opportunities in which AI can can be used. All right, so we've come to the end of our Gen X Y Z episode uh, this week as well. I want to thank you all again for sharing your insight as well. And as these gentlemen also mentioned, it's something important that we need to be aware of what AI can do, and we need to use it carefully as well. And we need to be aware of what purpose that we are using this Absolutely. technology for. And uh, that is all on our episode tonight. Join us again next week with another topic that's relating to the youth. Just in case you couldn't watch us on air, you can always re-watch by catching us on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash English. I'm Suzanne Shanali. Stay safe and have a good night.